Hi, in this video we're going to talk about ANSI nulls. Now there are two parts to this basically the first one being what is ANSI and the second one being how does that relate to uh, uh, nulls. Now ANSI is basically just a set of standards that is being used to ensure that uh, database vendors write their application code in a way that the, uh, the database tables and code is portable between vendors and this was uh, mainly to address a concern with regard to being locked into a particular vendor because of the proprietary hardware or software uh, query languages that they might be using. So ANSI was intended mainly to make sure that when you write a SQL query in uh, SQL Server, you could potentially just take that same code and run it in Oracle and uh, MySQL, etc. Which is why the select, insert, update, delete statements, if you look at uh, uh, almost any database platform remains the same. Now, obviously, that kind of restricts the database vendors. So over time, they have implemented their own features and therefore this is not truly compliant across the board. But the intention was to make sure that there was no vendor lock-in. Now, ANSI nulls is actually one of the database settings in a group of database settings, which is what we call ANSI defaults. Some of them we've talked about previously. And ANSI nulls is mainly about how to understand or how to work with null values when you're querying them of the database. When we work with nulls, we use the is null option, which works whether you use ANSI null on or off, because that's specifically meant to handle nulls. And uh, we'll have a look at that in a minute. So let's go ahead and look at the database option first. So what you can do here is uh, you can go ahead and set ANSI null of the database to off. In which case, what happens is when you run a query like this, which says select beals off is equal to null, SQL Server understands that you're looking for null values and will execute the query keeping that in mind. So if you look over here right now, I've set ANSI nulls off at the database level and ANSI nulls off at the session level. However, let's see what happens actually in the real world. If I just go ahead and run ANSI nulls set to off at the uh, database level, and then I go ahead and run this query, you'll see that right now it doesn't work. And the reason why it doesn't work is because my connection settings default values still point to ANSI null is equal to on. And when I say ANSI null is equal to on, then nulls are not treated as a value that you can just do equal to. So this is one of the big reasons why I think that this database option is really not relevant anymore. And uh, one of the good things uh, compared to previous uh, settings that I was talking about was if you Google ANSI nulls, you'll find that Microsoft has decided to make sure that going forward, all database uh, versions in future will have ANSI null set to on by default, which makes it just a little bit more easier to understand that uh, certain features that we're talking about doesn't really have any relevance uh, within mod modern database systems. So you'll see uh, in future versions of SQL Server, ANSI null will always be on and any application setting the option to off will generate an error. So technically what that means is that this option is always going to be on and doesn't really need a database setting anymore because it's just going to throw an error. In other words, you shouldn't write any queries where you're looking for nulls using the equal to sign. Now, why this is important is because let's look at this query here. So I've got ANSI nulls off set for the first query and ANSI nulls set on for the second query. And when you do that, you'll see that we get the same number of rows. So that's not really an issue. But what you'll see is that the performance of the first one, which is using the null logic, which is the ANSI null off, is uh, 58 milliseconds, whereas the performance for the is null logic, which is specifically meant to uh, search for null values, is uh, about half. And again, your mileage varies depending on the data and things like that. But you'll see that when we have a specific uh, option available that's customized or tailored to using nulls, it just, it just makes sense to go ahead and use that. So uh, I've seen this implementation as well in some cases where you take a null value defaulted to something and then do a comparison. And I'm not sure why that would be relevant, but there are scenarios where I've seen it being implemented. But this is even worse than just setting ANSI nulls equal to uh, on. So if you look over here, what we have is, uh, I've set it off at the moment, but um, you see it takes about 150 milliseconds. And if I set it to on, there's not really gonna be much of a difference but uh, better to see it for yourself. So 133 milliseconds. So uh, when you think about it, basically what's gonna happen in future, or what you should already be doing is you should always have ANSI null set to on, which is the kind of default. 
and you should always search for nulls using is null or is not null and a lot of guys obviously do this it's not that big a deal everybody knows that they're supposed to do this which is one of the reasons why i think this database setting is also irrelevant in modern database uh, rdbms systems and should probably be removed and hopefully based on what we're seeing with microsoft it looks like it will be removed in future so that's pretty much it with regard to ANSI now. It's not really a complicated setting. And uh, again, uh, personally, what I feel is that you shouldn't have too many nulls in your database systems. It just means that you've probably not done normalization properly. And uh, again, there are genuine cases where nulls are important, but uh, properly designed database systems will have a severely restricted set of columns that have null values in them. And again, it's usually a trade-off between over normalizing and uh, query performance. So uh, that's again a personal design choice that a lot of people make. But I tend to usually default the values to something so that uh, it's just easier for me to look up. And again, I've already posted a post about uh, how null values affect count and sum and aggregation operations, mathematical operations, and how they slow down the uh, ability of uh, the database to do aggregates on columns that are nullable. So definitely check that out as well. Uh, I hope you've enjoyed this video and uh, that's pretty much it for ANSI Nulls. Thank you for watching.